We're all set, Martha. Great. Good evening. Uh, welcome to the Weathersfield Library Board meeting. It is September 28th, uh, about seven o'clock, and um, we are going to get rolling with um, any public comment. Brosk, any? There, I don't see anyone in our waiting room. And I or... haven't received emails as of 6.59, and I didn't receive anything in snail mail either that I'm aware of that I've received. Okay. All right, we'll move on. Any additions or changes to the agenda? No. no? All right, good. Um, staying on track, uh, we have the approval of the minutes from the September 28th meeting. Did I say September 20th before? Because I was looking at the, yeah. So for the record, I'd like to amend the record to reflect that today is October um, 26th. Um, but we're looking back at the um, September 28th meeting. And uh, do I have a motion to approve the minutes from September 28th? Yeah, I'll motion it. I'll second it. Okay, thank you. Um, any discussion? Uh, Amanda does a great job, so many thanks. And I did, um, Amanda, your yours is really, really good. And I... Um, triple check them with the recording that you didn't have access to. <laughs> and so good job. I reordered a few things um, from what you had sent me originally, just so that you're aware. I reordered. I saw. Things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was fine. Yeah. Great. Nothing else. All right. We'll take a vote. Um, Amanda, we'll start with you. All in favor. Aye. Uh, Michelle? Aye. Lori? Aye. Peter? Aye. Hannah? Abstained. Okay. And I'm, Wasn't a, I'm a yes, so uh, all done with that. Great. All right. Let's move on to town council. Hi, Kevin. How's it going? Hey, Martha. How are you? Thank you very Good. much. Appreciate it. Good. Um, we actually have, uh, we did quite a bit of uh, business at our last council meeting, uh, was it last week or so? Uh, I'll try to run through them rather quickly. Um, we approved a, uh, a deep grant. Um, it's a little complicated, but essentially what it attempts to do is establish a, uh, a planning process so that uh, Riverfront Recapture will be able to link Windsor all the way down to Rocky Hill. Uh, the known cost of this, uh, the cost of this is unknown at this point. Uh, each town collectively is supposed to kick in 20% of the cost. So until we know how many towns are going to contribute to this, we don't really know what the bottom line is to Weathersfield. Uh, but we did approve it. So we're looking forward to kind of results in the future to see uh, what the town can do uh, with that Meadows area right now. Um, we did approve uh, a contract for a search firm for our new town manager. Uh, it's very similar to what, the one we just used. Uh, it's the same actual company that we used for the chief, um, a little bit of reduced price because we just used them. Um, so that'll be uh, coming together in short order because uh, interim body, uh, man, time manager Bonnie Theron is only gonna be here for the next three to four months. Uh, we also did approve a grant um, for parking in Old Weathersfield. Uh, many of you who um, have come down Old Weathersfield know that Especially during the holidays and the scarecrows, uh, it's difficult to find parking, which is kind of a good problem to have because uh, the businesses are doing very well. Uh, this grant is about it's a half a million dollar grant to expand uh, on the parking lot where the firehouse now sits. It is where the uh, community gardens are. The community gardens would be bumped back in order to provide more uh, parking spaces to get more and more people uh, off parking off the street. Um, and Finally, we passed the uh, resolution regarding to Brainerd Airport. Uh, this has been kicking around the last couple of weeks. Um, Brainerd Airport is, a, is a kind of a large issue here in Old Weathersfield, um, just mostly due to the no and, and kind of quality of life issue. And as the business district, it becomes more and more of an issue for folks uh, that are uh, coming to visit our stores uh, up and down Main Street. Uh, so we did, were able to get some language in there that acknowledges the development uh, of that area. Um, this uh, piggybacks on what uh, the City of Hartford's City Council uh, proposed a resolution decommissioning uh, Brainerd about a month ago. 
Uh, so that resolution did pass here in the town of Wethersfield, and that was unanimous bipartisan support. And I'm, I'm happy to take any questions if anybody has any. Anyone? Do we know who the okay. chief is yet? I don't believe it's made public yet. The offer has been uh, sent to, to that individual. Uh, I believe they're negotiating back and forth, but I think right now what they're doing is making sure that all of his, uh, uh, everything that he needs in terms of his licensing that he needs move over from one, uh, one department to the next is all taken care of. But I have a feeling you'll, you should hear something very soon. Kevin, for the um, decommissioning of the airport, were you saying that um, everyone voted unanimously, unanimously to close it down? Uh, well, yes and no. <laughs> it's a little complicated. I'm sorry, Peter. So uh, the vote, uh, we did have uh, some language in there in the original resolution that called for uh, the decommissioning of the airport. That would be, like I said, the piggyback, basically exactly what the city of Hartford uh, that did not pass, that, that failed uh, three to six on the party line vote. But we were able to get a resolution that acknowledges the issue here in Old Weathersfield, acknowledges the noise issue, and also acknowledges the, um, the development potential uh, of that 200 plus acres uh, that Hartford would have should the airport be decommissioned. Yeah, um, I've lived here 11 years and uh, I, I call the noise complaint and they never answer. And, uh, you know, um, it's kind of useless, to be honest with you. Um, uh, I've gone to meetings and voiced my opinion, you know, that uh, it should be decommissioned, that there is a huge problem. Um, and they'll say that they'll cooperate and they never do. So, um, I don't know, I just maybe want to put that on the record also. And also, too. To cut down all those trees is really pretty. I, I just think it's a, a travesty to destroy our natural environment. You know, um, I believe that are cutting down how many acres of of um, trees on that side? Do you know? It's uh, I believe it's twenty plus acres, uh, eleven of which are under Weathersfield jurisdiction. Uh, I think that's outrageous if we're environmentalists that we should just cut down trees um, and create more pollution for air traffic for wealthy people who own jets who want to just drop off their kids, um, you know, to go golfing or something. I hate to stereotype the rich, but, um, you know, uh, I, I really have a problem with all of that. It, it's, Peter, it, it, it's very difficult, um, and I'm sorry to kind of belabor this, but it's, the issue right now is uh, regarding the flight path, I, I'm, I'm the liaison to the Deutsche Commission as well, so it's something that I'm well versed in, but you know, we, we've gone to CAA, we've gone to Brainerd, we've gone to the Jet Center a hundred times to say, please encourage um, the pilots to fly over the river. The fact is they, they simply can't. They have no jurisdiction. The FAA says you need to, uh, pilots should have the flexibility to fly where they feel it's most safe. So we cannot direct them over. We can encourage it, I know. but that's all, that's all we can do, unfortunately. And, and, and it doesn't help. Um, you can speak all you want. It's, it's like talking to the wall. That's what I'm trying to say. Exactly. Like, um, exactly. That's nice that we made this resolution, but it, it's meaningless because like I said, I've complained, I've called, I've written. They don't care. It's like, no, we need to do it this way. This is our airport, screw you. Um, and so they're not very good neighbors, really. <laughs> they don't care about us. That's all. No, I, I just, yeah, yeah so, what, so what it takes to actually decommission is, is an act of essentially the federal government to say, we no longer need this airport. Uh, so right now the city of Hartford is really taking it upon itself to basically untangle that. How do we make that happen? So their resolution in terms of decommissioning is essentially the starting point. The, the city council put a marker in and said, listen, we no longer want you here. We think we can do without you. So they're trying to slowly unravel that. Um, what happens next, there'd probably be an act of the legislature where that land would be turned over by the state. And the state would essentially pay back um, the liabilities that uh, the Brainerd currently uh, has towards not only the federal government, but the current tenants of uh, Brainerd Airport. And then just one last question and I'll stop. <laughs> um, it was on party line. Are you saying three Democrats voted for it and the six Republicans did not, or was it opposite or? Correct, three, the three Democrats voted to decommission, the six did not. Okay, I will remember that at the voting booth. Thank you. Yep, you bet. Um, all right, thank you. I, I just want, for the record, I work for Riverfront Recapture, and that's uh, the, I'm working on that grant uh, for the deep 
grant, and uh, we're really excited about that. That's going to be, that's a great um, avenue to open. So, okay. Um, any, anyone else? All right, thank you. Moving on um, to uh, report of the chair. Um, just a couple of things. Um, because we have more to talk about during the outreach and um, finance portion of uh, our committee reports. Um, first of all, I just want to remind everyone that the um, next meeting is not, we don't have a November meeting. There is a um, meeting on December, our next meeting, our final meeting of the year is December 7th. So it's not only not at the end of the month, it's at the beginning of the next month and that takes care of the two months. So um, just uh, a note for your calendars. And then um, Brooke shared um, th uh, this afternoon a, um, a memo that was sent um, regarding in-person meetings. Um, I think we'll just take that as an advisement, you know, as, a, as an advisement today. And, you know, if we want to have some discussion about whether we're comfortable, but what it essentially says is that it's up to us to vote um, as to whether we want to return to in-person meetings. Um, so I'm going to suggest um, that we we um, put that on the agenda for the December meeting and, and vote at that time as to whether, and that kind of puts a nice pat on it, um, if we wanted to return to, or with the new year to, um, to in-person meetings. So um, take note, does anyone have any questions? It would really be for Brooke regarding the, this uh, policy. Okay. Hi, Terry. Hey there. <laughs> Welcome. Um, okay. All right. Uh, moving on, Brooke, to your report. Hey. Um, the town's emergency operations center is still holding meetings regarding the pandemic. Um, as, as I said at the last meeting, we're gonna to continue to bounce up and down as a town between the orange and the red. Um, the last, at the last meeting, we were in the orange. It is in, um, I, we'll see where we go this week, I don't know. Um, the town, the big news out of that meeting um, and uh, through the interim town manager is the town-wide mask mandate uh, ended Friday that evening. Um, and this was against the advice of the health director, Charlie Brown. Um, and however, since it ended at five o'clock, so we had everything in place for Saturday with signage adjusted, it is still highly recommended to wear masks. And I've noticed about over the last couple of days since I've been back at work on Monday and Tuesday that um, well over half the people coming in are still masked, which is good. Um, and so, and social distancing is still expected um, and we're keeping the plexi up for the for foreseeable future. Um, but that's, um, and we're still trying to keep seating at a minimum um, for now, um, but we're still trying to look forward to the future. And that's where um, in the month of January, we'll be looking to uh, resume in-person programming, perhaps a board meeting, um, and other groups hopefully could start using the meeting rooms in January and February. Um, we're in the process of clearing out some, uh, the, spa the two spaces um, to be utilized, but then any in-person programming that we have with say teens after school in the spaces we're thinking, it's going to be about 10 to 12 kids max in order to keep the social distancing, if that's still in effect, and it is expected to still be in effect at that time, um, you know, in order to keep things safe. So um, the staff are, are gearing up for that. Um, we still would have um, a, perhaps, a, a, we would still, we, I'm sorry, we would still continue to have virtual programming as well. Um, but we are looking forward to this change. We want to get back into the, the groove of things the way we enjoy doing it. And, I, and it's just nice to be able to do that. So, um, so that's uh, the reopening. And then the, you saw that the, you guys you know, will think about it. And then if you want to resume, you'll put it to a vote to have in-person uh, meetings. 
um, you, you, you'll vote beforehand for that. Um, the Friends of the Library, they are uh, still doing the raffles. They've sold over 90 tickets so far. So please, please, please buy your tickets. They are $5 each. Um, and the gift baskets are beautiful. If you haven't seen them, they're out front um, in front of the circulation desk. Um, in addition, their membership campaign is, is still um, going on. So if you haven't joined the Friends, please do so. Um, in addition, um, they just recently expressed that in addition to funding programming as they normally do, and um, after their outdoor meeting in middle at the end of September, they had expressed interest in, you know, is there furnishings that the library would need? Um, they've expressed interest in that. And then they recently reached out uh, to me and I included Martha on the email exchange that they have um, an interest in, they had originally funded, fully funded the enlarged photos that we have in the library in the main room. And um, that's meant to be a rotating collection. Um, and so we wouldn't rotate the whole thing out, but we would rotate a couple pieces at a time, but we, it's tied to the town photo contest. And so we have a couple of years worth of photos. So we have some new spots. We have, well, we have some spots we need to fill that weren't originally filled. So we have a couple of those. And then there's a couple photos that we're looking to rotate out um, as well. So um, I responded back, included Martha that, and, and so um, hopefully that's something that they would be willing to continue to fund. And I think that they would, because they, they're the ones who reached out to me. And I was like, me and Martha were just talking about this after the outreach, uh, after the winter green walk, we were, we were talking about that. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's nice. The, the, the friends are looking to spend some money and I'm happy to take it from them um, if they're willing to give it. Um, what so is, what is that called? The, the photo program? What is it? So, so the every, for the town calendar out of Peter Gillespie's office, the town uh, planner, um, they, he oversees the process. And I think part of it is um, sponsored by EDIC, I want to say. And I don't want to give, it's, um, well, it's this town calendar and there's a photo contest and the town that's my garden yeah. it is it's your garden. <laughs> <laughs> it is <laughs> and so i want to say and i don't want to um it's the i'm sorry it's the it, entrance is submitted the weathersfield tourism commission uh community photo contest so um other, gr other groups and organizations are involved and EDIC does have a message in, in included in here. Um, but photos are submitted. And when you submit photos, you're grant the, into the contest, you grant permission for the town to utilize the photos for like to print in the town calendar. Um, we can also enlarge them. It doesn't necessarily mean that the photographer is given away all their rights, though. Um, so as we decommission them, I can't just like necessarily give them away to a person who really likes the photo or sell it for a fundraiser. And I have to talk with Peter Gillespie and the town attorney about all that. Um, but we've all we've we've credited the um, the photographers are clearly credited um, and from the entries between 2012 and 2017 um we selected a bunch of photos they have to be very high resolution in order to enlarge them for the canvas so not every photo would have worked on that large of a scale um and then the we did a test piece that is gorgeous it was just too small for being mounted up above so it's up on the staircase um and the and, and so the 2021 photo contest winners um, that will be for the 2022 town calendar, um, they're submitting now and the deadline is like next week. Um, and so we help promote that through our listserv. Um, but I'm sure Denise and Peter in the planning office are getting tons of entries. And from those entries, um, after the contest is over and they selected the winners and it goes the town calendar is printed um my group will look at the um 
the the entries and so they may not have been published anywhere but it may be something we want to blow up for the library um and so uh I, that's a, a initially when we started that it was a very small group of individuals who were on that um selection the final selection and i don't want to say it was director's choice but it was fairly close to that <laughs> um so we're looking to broaden that up a little bit with um i, I have some staff who have like master's degrees in art actually um, in addition to english and library science um who are very good with um uh, art and photography or what you know whatever um and 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 so we'd look to increase the number of staff involved we'd also be interested in perhaps having uh, one member of the friends um, board be a part of that process especially since they help fund it um, as well as um, perhaps a library board member who might be interested in in helping with that selection process um, and so and and so that that's something that would be of interest to me to open up that perhaps be more democratic <laughs> um, as opposed to Brooke doesn't like that photo that's not going up there. Um, and so we'll, you know, we'll see how that goes, but I do it, it has to be me and the ghost of Francis shed. We spend the most time here if you don't know who Francis shed is there's a whole bio on her of on our website, but um, she's a former librarian from back in the day. Um, or decades and decades ago um but way back in the day yeah but way <laughs> back in the day <laughs> um but you know i we spend the most amount of time here and so it's got to be something you know that would look good but i mean the photos there's just too many to select from um and now we'll be looking at i believe the 2018 because that's when we mounted it so we didn't have 2018 entries i don't believe so we're looking at the 2018 2019 and and if there were 2020 um entries of at least a couple of years worth of entries so it may not be a photo anybody has seen except peter and, and denise i don't you know um so it's exciting um and it's just different you walk in and you're like oh that's you know i don't know that we would select this that it's peter's backyard maybe um <laughs> to say and then we tried to get have some photos that were not necessarily old weathersfield uh, there's one right now that's mounted of the marching band and it's one of the few photos that in the all the entries over a five-year period that had humans in it and so that kind of like oh there's actual humans and you know you have the um the rifle from old weathersfield at memorial you know and all that kind of stuff so that and there's that as well but um i, I really like the marching band <laughs> and so and it was a very different photo and then we had something from the cove carnival which is just kind of a different look so um if that's something you're interested in please let me know um and i just see it as a committee making a bunch of selections and then having a meeting with me and the ghost of francis shed to see what <laughs> So, but it'll, it'll be, I think it'll be good to open it up a little bit more than just me and another staff member really making the selections. And in my defense, I kind of, I'm not color blind, but I am color challenged. And so I don't see quite all the exact same colors as other people. And so sometimes my selections for art or furnishings or paint is not the best. And so it's good to invite others. And I did mention this in my interview with the library board that that was a challenge I had that sometimes I can't see the same thing everyone else is seeing. So can't imagine why we hired you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that does that answer the question? Yeah. Yeah. So um, let's see what else. Yeah. So if the friends want to fund it, that would be fabulous um, but i think it would be great to involve them in the process um, some upcoming uh programming uh tonight we have you are not alone so we have a paranormal author and medium who's going on right now as we speak um so we hopefully have a crowd for that i suspect so 
Um, we have pumpkin judging at the end of this week for the children's department and the children's are wrapping up their Halloween programming with hilarious Halloween. Um, it's a video we provide people interested individuals with a link to um, with a national recognized singer sort storyteller. So that that's that's great on um, upcoming virtual programs that we have that may be of interest to all of you is uh, November 8th. Uh, what is it worth. Um, and so you know, top factors you're looking for if you have, you know, trinkets or something and you're like, what is this worth? And so it's with a radio host. Um, November 9th, The Magic of a Winter Garden um, is a program we have. And on November 11th, we have a program entitled Spy Mistresses, the story of allied women spies of World War II. You know, something different. And the uh, in the children's department, they're going to be for November. Everything is about dinosaurs, so it's Dino Vember. Um, so they have scavenger hunt and take and makes. Everything's dinosaur um, themed for the month. Um, any questions about programming? Again, we're looking to resume in person, small in person programming beginning in January, and we're really excited about that. That sounds um, great, Brooke. Yeah. Sounds great. And it sounds like a variety of things. So that's exciting. And hopefully we can get back because I remember going to some gardening things um, uh, and loved it um, being part of the library and it, it was packed. Um, yeah. So hopefully we can get back to that. It'd be nice. Yeah. Do you do you know when it's open to a limited in person if there's going to be both virtual attendance as well? Um, a particular program. Like if we, it's, it would be very, very, very difficult for us to pull that off. And so if we think it's going to be a larger crowd, like tonight, the paranormal author, we would not currently host that in person because we just, we wouldn't be able to socially distance um, safely. And so, um, but smaller ones that we think we get 10 to 12 people. We have a Saturday cinema or a Tuesday night cinema um, a thing where we know that the standard attendance is about, you know, 10 to 15, like that we believe we'll be able to pull off. And then, you know, at some point, hopefully social distancing will go away and we can be closer <laughs> together, <laughs> you know, but even thinking of a library board meeting, we know how long our tables are. We know six feet. And then we anticipate the number of members of, of, you know, there's nine of you, there's me, there's Kevin, there's the friends show up. So now you're at 12. And then you have to include if there's members of the public and the most members of the public we've ever had is like a couple, I think, but you're still anticipating them. They need to be socially distanced as well. So you know, there, can you fit 15 people in a room? Yes. Um, and then likely you won't have 15 people anyway. So um, that, yeah. So, but it, it, I would anticipate anything that we thought would draw a really big crowd is going to be virtual mm -hmm. for the foreseeable future. Um, and some, and it's some things where let's say we have a lot of teens interested in doing you know, pick whatever workshop it is in person for teens, and we can only fit 10 or 12, we may have the teen librarian do one on Tuesday and one on Friday. And that's how we'll end up doing maybe more programs. And that's time consuming, but it, it's, it's, it's a value add to the community, we believe. So um, that's important to try to do that. But we just want to make sure that we're doing it safely for not just the staff, but the public involved as well. Um, so I, I think with some things with children and teens specifically, we may be running multiple sessions um, and we'll see if we're able to pull that off. Other questions about programming? No. Okay. And so, and what my staff and I are extremely focused on uh, this time of year is, well, first we, I've recently met with the interim town manager, Bobby, uh, Bonnie Therian. Um, she seems great. I, I wasn't here when she was here previously. Um, and I will be, uh, I felt I had a productive meeting with her. Um, we will be, I will be setting up another meeting with her soon um, before the middle of November 
regarding our capital improvement projects. So we have like a 10 year kind of plan for different projects. Um, and so that usually spells the very, very beginning of the budget process that is coming. Um, and so this is prep work actually for January um, coming up. So, um, but I'm, I'll be setting up a meeting with her and um, I'll appreciate her feedback, um, especially as someone who's done it specifically in this town before. Um, I don't know how far into the budget process she will really um, get as they do the conduct the town manager search, um, but we'll see. Um, so she may be here more than the 120 day, <laughs> I don't know, um, that, she, that is for three or four months. So we'll see. Um, we, my staff and I are needing to provide numbers to the finance department for the town audit. Um, so that is fast approaching um, the deadlines for that. Um, we submit a borrow it CT expenditure report that's due at the end of this week. And that is for the state library. So every spring, we do receive money based on our net lens. So if I, who live in Milford, use my Milford Library card at the Weathersfield Library and check an item out, that's a plus for Weathersfield and a ding to Milford. Um, and so there is a percentage of users here in Weathersfield who um, are users, but they don't live here and they're using out of town library cards. Um, and so uh, we have Hartford, uh, Newington, Rocky Hill, East Hartford, and Glastonbury are kind of our top five. Sometimes West Hartford comes into our top five or not. Um, so we submit a report and then every spring so far, they've had funding for, we receive money for that from the state. And so um, this I, I can't remember what the dollar figure is, but I do report on what we spent previously. Um, and so I can spend it on basically anything. Um, and I do kind of tuck that money away and, and, and hold it. So some years it's been as high. I think the highest we ever received, I want to say is 17 or 19,000 since I've been here. Um, but over, but since there's less people traveling and going out and about, We've been in, I want to say, the $7,000 range um, of receiving um, the funds. Um, so that report is due, and I'm really reporting on a previous year's expenditures. Um, and then the next, the thing that's due, uh, the report thing, the report that's due November 15th is the State Library Annual Report. And this is quite time consuming for a number of my staff as we gather or we fine tune uh, the statistics and make sure everything is matchy matchy because whatever we've put into for the audit report needs to make sure that we match the the state library and everything matches the monthly report you know all that kind of stuff the, our stat reports and whatnot so um that's a lot of work that we're doing over the next couple of weeks um so it's kind of intense and um I'm very grateful to all the managers and the staff and Elaine is number crunching and poor Celia is gathering the whole thing together. So it is quite an intensive next couple of weeks we have coming up. I did recently receive a copy of the wage charts from the town's finance um, department for the, un the new union contracts that just started July 1st. Um, the unions, uh, the, the unions are triple checking um, these specific charts for the staff to make sure everything is correct. We think for the most part it is fairly correct. Um, but then we start submitting forms for them to receive their retro pay back to July 1st. Um, so, um, and then I have another sheet that I add into as I am uh, redoing the entire union contract. So everything is, um, hasn't been PDF to death and uh, whatnot so that we all have a clean copy for the next round of negotiations. So that's a lot of work that, that I'm putting in myself for that. Um, we have a new software. Um, we've purchased a new software um, for room reservations. We'll be getting a new software for museum passes. Um, a lot of this is going to be coming to a head. One software company is closing shop is what's happening. And they're like, we're quitting the business completely. You will have no support after December 2021. 
we're out and we're ending up purchasing two separate products that do this. Um, and one is provided by our consortium and the other we've gone out to get for the room reservation. And we're trying to get all of this together and our staff shown how to utilize this um, before December. And we'll see if we're able to pull that off. And we still have another 30 days if, in case we don't make that December 1st uh, deadline that I've put in place. And that's what I have for my report. Any questions? For the record, Miss Shed was so long ago, we only have a painting of her and no picture. So that'll give you an oh. idea. <laughs> Back to Miss Shed. <laughs> and if the painting is in the upstairs room, if you haven't seen it, you missed it on your tour, you gotta go see it. It's in one of the meeting rooms upstairs. We gotta bring Miss Shed out. She shouldn't be hiding in that in the back. <laughs> wow, Brooke. <laughs> we'll remember that when we put up your picture. No, no, please. <laughs> All right, anyway, um, now they, all right, so moving on to outreach, um, we had a great outing um, back to Wintergreen Woods to look at our story walk. Um, it was, this time it was, um, Kristen was there, she's not able to join us tonight, um, and then Brooke and I, and it was nice because Kristen grew up in Weathersfield, so she had sort of like, had a different perspective from, you know, having lived here all her life, and um, I've been here for 20 years and Brooke is uh, newer in town, not really in town, hopefully one day in town. Um, so, um, but we, uh, so anyway, we walked the woods again. We did it last time in the spring. And so it's one of the nice things about woods is they change. And so just like our story would change, the path changed. Um, and, you know, it got us all, it got us very excited once again about the project. Um, this kind of leads into our finance discussion about some CIP things and, and some things we want to spend time on. But um, I think it's something we've decided we want to, you know, start, try to start to move forward and maybe look at an RFP uh, process for getting some prices of what it would, what it would cost. Um, but again, I think that's something we'll bring to the finance committee and have a discussion about. Um, but in the meantime, if anybody would like to go and take the walk in the woods and see the area, I'm more than happy to do it anytime. It's right around the corner from my house. So um, I, I'm always happy to go down there. It's a, it's a lovely, it's a quick walk. I think we figured it, it only took about a half an hour if you were to do it with a, it's, which is nice because like thinking about it from a parent's point of view, if you had a little one that you had to carry for a while, it's not that far to carry, you know, if you were doing the walk. Um, even if you were, you were being pokey and taking time with everything, you could probably do it in about 45 minutes. It's right near the bike path. So that can be combined with other family activities. Um, there's a lovely space right where the parking lot is. There's a, there's kind of an open space there where you could see where we could create the opportunity for doing story time right there at the, at the trailhead. Um, and so that, you know, there's just a lot of different possibilities there that it, that create, you know, for some nice placemaking there. And it's a little different than the opportunity at Mill Woods where there's already a lot going on. This sort of brings some vibrancy and something new to a different part of town, but right on a bike path, right on a set path. So it's a, it's a good opportunity. But like I said, if anyone would like to, I'm happy to take another walk um, anytime we can, we can figure something out. So um, any questions on outreach? All right. And then um, we also had a finance committee meeting um, where we kind of dug deep on the gift and donations policy. Um, and it was a little bit, we don't have it ready to bring forward to you all yet because uh, it was a little back to the drawing board based on our feedback. Um, I think Brooke had made some extensive revisions that she wanted feedback on. And we talked about we got into the nitty gritty of those, uh, like, should we say this word or that word, which is classic policy meeting uh, stuff. So, um, but it was good. It was a good meeting and it's an important um, policy to have in terms of both making sure it, 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 this is um, something that works for Brooke, her staff, but also making sure we're properly storing any gifts that are given to the library. Um, so 
that will be the, I think we're looking to have our next meeting on December 1st, Wednesday, December 1st. So that would be the, just the week before the next library board meeting. Um, and then um, at that time, we'll also, Brooke mentioned, she's gonna be looking at capital, um, any projects we might bring forward for capital improvements. Um, we, there's probably a low likelihood that we'll qualify. There's a lot more um, pressing issues around town. So, um, but we do fortunately have um, not deep pockets, but we've got pockets that we can maybe look at using for talking about the story walk, talking about the new rugs that we, the, the flooring that we need in the children's department um, and any ways that we can maybe um, um, uh, improve the, um, the teen area things like that. So th there's projects that I think we've had our eye on for a while that it would be nice to start to make some plans for. So uh, I think, uh, so that meeting will be about that. Also, Brooke, I think would like us to forgive everyone's dues from before COVID, which we'll talk about first then, but we'll give it, we'll do a little clean slate, hopefully for pre-COVID. Who, who knows what anyone was <laughs> like back in the day, talk about back in the day. So um, that's it. So that'll be December 1st for a, uh, a library board meeting. I mean, a finance committee meeting. Any questions on that? All right, Brooke, you wanna look at the, um, at the, the accounts? Any questions um, or do we need it? Yeah, so I, I emailed uh, the finance committee, got to see them la early, late last week, um, but we, the the Charles Schwab reflects the $20,000 withdraw and that's the showman account. And that was just the withdraw to move it to the town account ready for expenditure. Um, and at, when, when appropriate, um, I'll come forth with, I'd like to propose that we spend it on this, you know, for the adult collection and that would be subject to vote. Um, and then, we would go and spend the money um, if, if the board agrees. And so is there any questions about Showman? And then the other Charles Schwab account, which I fondly refer to as just library account, <laughs> for lack of a better term, um, you know, is, is doing what it normally does. So those are the September 30th statements. And because there won't be a November meeting, I will email you, um, the the October statement as soon as I get it. I'll make the copy and, and stuff. And if you want the full report, I am sending you one page of the report that has the the balance, the current the balance as of the end of the month, the last day of the month. If you'd like ever a copy of the full report, um, I'm happy to provide that as well. Um, so that any questions about those two accounts? No. Okay, and so, and then the last um, is the operating. Um, we're at 29%, but uh, as of tomorrow, we'll definitely be up to 31%. And then there's a folder in my office that has several more thousand for me to sign off on. Um, so I would say we're two or three percentage points because that was, that report was run on October 20th. Um, and then this week is a payroll week. So you could count at least two or three more percentage points for sure by tomorrow, um, which is when payroll, no, I'm sorry, Thursday is when payroll comes. I'm thinking it's Wednesday. Um, today's Tuesday. So on Thursday, when payroll runs, um, we'll, we'll click up. It. So we're at 30%, one third. So that's where we are for that. Any, any questions Great. about that? No. Oh, good. Okay. Um, next on our agenda is our executive session. Unless anyone has anything else they need to bring forward for the good of the group while well, we're all right. Um, well, we'll take our vote first. Can I get a motion to, or should I? I'll say goodbye to Kevin and goodbye to Brooke first, <laughs> and then we'll have our motion so we're not mixing it. things up. All right. Thank, Thank you, you very Kevin. much, Kevin, for Thank being you, here. Thank yeah. you, Brooke. Brooke, I'll pause the meeting. Once we take our vote, we'll um, we'll pause the meeting and go and we'll stop the recording and then I'll record again after okay. we come out. So, okay. okay. Thank you. So uh, uh, why don't you stay for the motion? Hold on. 
Okay. This is, I don't know why I feel like you should, but <laughs> and I actually, make an Martha, I'm going to make you host right now. Okay. Um, Got it. Uh, you are host. Okay. All right. Can I get a motion to uh, move to go into executive session? I'll motion. motion. Oh, I'll, I'll second it then. Peter. I'll, I'll, say, I'll say the same thing, Peter. Yeah. Your choice, <laughs> Thanks, Amanda. On the, we have them both um, going around the horn. Michelle? Yes. Uh, Terry? Yes. Lori? Yes. Hannah? Yes. Amanda? Yes. Diane? Yes. Peter? Yes. And I will vote yes too. All right. Thank you so much, Brooke. I'm going to stop the recording now. Thank you. I'm going to pause. And... Okay, we're back. Um, so um, we, it, I believe we have a motion to be yes. made. So. Do I have to repeat it all? <laughs> yes. Uh, I motion <laughs> to accept the director's evaluation and a 5% increase. And do I have a second? I will second that. All right, and we'll go around the horn. Uh, Lori? Yes. Hannah. Yes. Terry. Yes. Diane. I couldn't hear you. <laughs> For the record, we can all see that Diane said, yeah, can you give me a <laughs> thumbs up? <laughs> yeah. Yes. OK. Uh, Amanda. Yes. Uh, Peter. Yes. Michelle. Yes. And I'm a yes too. Okay, so unanimously approved. Thank you everyone for um, your work and your work on evaluations. Um, anything else for the go to the order? Go Motion to, to adjourn. All right. Um, I see, I know, I can see you're not uh, muted, Diane, and we yeah. didn't, I don't know what that is. So you're just going to have to uh, give us the thumbs up. So <laughs> motion to adjourn. Can I get a second on that? Second. Okay. And um, we have to go around. Amanda, you want to leave? Yes. <laughs> Diane. <laughs> yes, good. All right, Peter. Yeah. Michelle. Yes. Okay. Terry. Yes. Hannah. Yes. Lori. Yes. Okay. And I, uh, I agree. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thanks right. for coming. Have a good night. All right. Everybody. Have a good one. Have a good night. Good night.